Hello. It has been a long time. If I had a lot of followers, I would be saying something like, Give me followers, for I have sinned. It has been... Um, hang on, hang on. It has been 14 days since my last Twitch. That's because I've been working on this. And this is called uh, Ephemeris. 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 Um, which the title of that might change because I just last night thought, hey, what about that thing I always say about not, you know, naming your projects, things that a bunch of other people have named it. And I so I Googled Ephemeris album and I got at least three or four different albums that were that came out in the last 10 years that were named this. So I think I might see if I don't care or if I do care enough to change it. But I kind of like the name. It refers to it's a um it's a um it refer it refers to an astronomical um chart that uh keeps track of the motions of celestial bodies and uh it in, in uh, modern charts look at even artificial satellites and predicting where things are going to be when and and that i kind of like the idea um when related to music of this kind where things happen very slowly they the, the events don't usually just appear they kind of come in and out and there there are long delays between them that seem sequential or seem uh, cyclical um, and it is cyclical, but um, this piece is more generative and indeterminate, meaning that we don't really know what the um, uh, kind of randomizing within certain parameters. So there's a degree of determinacy where the composer steps in and says, this is what I want. And then there's another, you know, which, which leaves a great deal of it to kind of chance i guess it's not exactly chance it's kind of controlled within boundaries chance and I'll, I'll walk you through it um what we're hearing now is not the complete piece it's just a piece of it a piece of the piece um so th what we're listening to right now is is the a section you can see that there are three right now i started with a um which began as uh in the last <laughs> I think the last composition tweet or Twitch that I did was um, recording trumpet chords or arranging trumpet chords that I played into the microphone. Well, I messed with those a lot and, and made these kind of um, swells out of them, which you're kind of hearing right right now in a way. They're very distant and faint, but they're the original source material of all this that you're going to hear is all all uh, acoustically recorded stuff. So um, microphones and pickups, basically, it's my rule for this. No, no synthesized sounds. I mean, nothing wrong with that. I, you know, I have no problem with you know synth sounds. But for this project, I kind of wanted to stick with two instruments: the trumpet and the Fender Telecaster, which I'll show you in a little in a little while. But anyway, let's get right to this. Um, what we're hearing is just the first player or the first, you know, element of this. And yeah, you can read the the bottom thing. It's kind of a short description of of what's going on in this slice, but um, it's very kind of it doesn't. I, I can explain it more this way. So, um, what we're hearing are these kind of these chords fading in and fading out, and um, that's fine. But uh, they're they're not going to sound the same each time they happen. And I've made sure of that uh, using uh, th this piece, by the way, is being played by a, an application called. Um, I guess it's better to say that it's it's a programming language for musicians. 
for composers or sound people or sound designers. And it's a, as you can see, it's a graphical programming language. Um, I'm just learning it. It's just my, this is the second project I've, that I've worked on with this. Uh, the first, oh no, okay, so I guess the, the Twitch I did before was about the first one. It was, was, was the, um, um, oh gosh, I'm blanking. But anyway, it was the, it was a piece that I did called Crowd Song B. And that's different. That's, that's a different use of this. That was my first attempt. This is my second attempt. So what I wanted to do was um, put the programming into more, uh, to, to kind of do more in terms of what I what I want out of this piece. Normally I would just, you know, we would take these sounds and then throw them into a DAW and I would put them exactly where in time I want them and make them sound exactly the way I wanted to within a set, you know, time limit, you know, an hour or something. That's what I usually do. But um, for this, I want I wanted to set up something that's generative and generative music is not something that's new. It's been, uh, um, there's there's a whole history of generative uh, generative music and if you just if you want to get more into that start with Brian Eno um, who's I, I name I bring up his name all the time but um, I wanted to you know I wanted to play too I don't think that the I mean with with something that's so broad and full of possibilities um, I think it's ridiculous to just say, okay, that's been done. We're not, you know, there's no need to, to do any more of that because it's kind of like you've given, you've been given this set of tools and you can't just say, oh, we've used these tools. So we're done with them. That's not how tools work. You take those tools and you build something new and interesting out of them. And we'll never get to the bottom of all the possibilities of, of, of gener of generative music and, um, it's just by the nature of it, it's just f full of possibilities that I'm ready to dive in. Um, and I, but I'm just just saying that this is nothing new. There are plenty of gener uh, generative music out there. But okay, so what this program does is first it takes I've recorded all these tracks and put them on and made them into wave files. Um, each each um, generation or each iteration of these chords, they're all different. They all sound, they have different tonalities and things. And there are, but there are 23 of them. And they're all listed here, if you can see that. Um, I think I can, okay, I think I can blow this up. Oh my goodness, okay. Yeah, we can totally see this okay so you can see that each of these is a wave file and the little orange square there just indicates which one is being played at the moment or which one is queued up to play next um so yeah so it just switched to another one and you can see that name up here at the top um generally just so we i know these things are pretty um tough to look at it looks like a mess right now and, and I don't organize my my patches this whole thing this whole scheme here on one page is called a patch um, if you can imagine like a patch board on a you know vintage synthesizer with the chords going from one module to another for for different reasons that's that's the idea this is connected to that this goes into that this comes out of that this object processes that in a certain way there's math going on as you can see and so yeah that's a good way to kind of visualize it but don't don't be you know if you're not familiar with with pure data this language um it's it looks this looks really complicated but uh, it's really not as complicated as it could be and i'm just kind of scratching the surface of what this can do kind of still a noob at it and i'll admit that a lot of these processes that I've done here were just me figuring out how to use the thing and that this section this this is the part that figures out the delay between the file plays um, based on this information up here is I'm sure it's not the easiest way to do it that people who are 
um, if you're more familiar with this with pure data that you could figure out much better more efficient ways to use fewer objects and to, to do the same thing that i'm doing but <laughs> this is just the way i understand it um, at this level of my knowledge of it so um i think that's kind of funny because in a way um i mean if if this sound let's say this let's take this the min max computer okay i'd realize that some some of these things could be done a lot simpler with fewer objects but the way i've got it set up now it works it just it works it's not the easiest way it's kind of if you can imagine um you know those you know you could reach over and turn off the light switch or you could build one of those um what are they called rube goldberg machines that you know where you drop the ball and the ball hits the dominoes and the dominoes hit the dominoes if, you know for five minutes until it runs into another thing it pushes the car down the track and whoosh, and it touches the thing and then the springs up and the toast pops up and then the heater goes okay you know all that stuff um that uh, and then eventually it will come around to dropping a stick on the switch and turns the light switch off. We're not going to have really just gone over and turn off the switch. That's that's how I kind of uh, comically imagine my my knowledge of pure data is that I'm doing a lot of unnecessary processes that um, that could be simplified, and that I will learn eventually how to simplify this into fewer steps. But right now I got this beautiful Rube Goldberg device going. Um, and that's how I, you know, I'm fine with that. It's the process of learning, right? So let's get back to what, what this piece does. Um, what it does is, okay, so it, I have all these 23 sound files and it selects them by shuffle, which is not exactly random. It's random, but it's non-repeating random. So it'll go through the entire list before it'll repeat. Um, kind of like shuffling a deck of cards. You don't repeat the ace of spades when you shuffle the cards, okay? I don't need to explain that to you, right? All right. Don't over-explain, Gordon. Okay, so that's just what shuffle does. It took me so long to figure out. I was ready to create an algorithm that simulated shuffle by counting things and putting them into a table and then checking the table to see if it had already been there. And um, so I, I really wanted shuffle because I don't like how random repeats stuff so every so often. I know it's it's random. It doesn't mean it's gonna be evenly spread out. It's random is random. It, so I was often getting the same, um, the same thing one right after another. It just happened too much. So I didn't like the process of pure random and it's not really random anyway you kind of have to seed it to um to do random numbers because there's this whole thing but i'm not going to get into that but you know computers don't actually do random numbers they they simulate random randomness it's not actual randomness anyway um but what i wanted was a shuffle that didn't repeat that makes for a more interesting sound, I think. It's, so it plays them in different in a different order each time, um, but it doesn't repeat them until it's played all of them. Okay, I think that's clear, right? So then it you know it selects them and it it sends the file name to the um, to the sound player. So here's it receiving the file name and it opens the file and then it runs it through with these different things so there are two things there's um filter and the filter is up here okay this is the randomized filter so i you, you can set the filter to it's um what kind of filter is it it's a band pass filter that uh cuts off the low uh, everything to the left of a point and to the right of a point, but that point is broad. So that's the band. Um, so this is a good way to get rid of low humming at the low end and hiss at the top end. So, so what I've done here is here's the frequency. 
um, anything that's dark green with an orange line is being randomized. It's under control of the program. And here I've set it up to um, randomize each play based on you know where uh, the filter. So I can change it. You can hear it kind of sweeping through the frequencies. But and I can let it go and it'll choose randomly again next time. Um, and then the Q, which is how wide your your band of um, frequencies is. So if, if you make the Q higher, it's a very narrow, it's only looking at a very, it's, you're only going to hear a narrow um, set of frequencies at the top. So if I push up the filter, wait, wait for another tone to come. We're only going to hear, okay, here we go. It's very specific, but if we open it up, we hear more frequencies at once, and it doesn't matter where we are in the frequency spectrum. So that's cool. So these are kind of randomized between reasonable limits. So I've set it up to, it doesn't ridiculously, I mean, if, if you set it up just random filter Q and frequency, then you're often going to get outside of the bounds of human hearing or reasonable listening. So I there there are limits to how much randomness is going on just to make sure that it's reasonably audible and interesting, um, I think, to my ears. So there we go. So, so it goes through this kind of randomized filtering thing. And then it also goes through another randomizer, which is um, pan and volume. So I've got these three sliders here. Now, the one in the center um, is basically just volume, but I've got it automated so that um, all the time it's kind of running through this random pan crawler that I that I made. I'm sure there's a better way to do it, and there, I know there is. Actually, there's a there's an object called line that uh, will take We'll, we'll take your data and then move it up or down according to this line that you draw on a on a chart. But here I've kind of done this manually. This is my Rube Goldberg version of a pan crawler. So what I've got it doing is that it randomly chooses a, a volume to start with, and this is this works for left and right channel. So it'll every time it reiterates, it, it plays a new sound. It calculates a new random starting point for both of them, and then it'll immediately start crawling one channel down and another channel up. So they're always going to be. You can kind of see their behavior right now. That one's going down and the other is going up. So that's going to give the effect of panning. So we're coming up on the right more and down on the left. So it sounds, it's going to sound like it's moving to the right channel. So I don't know if you can hear this. Yeah, you can even see it in the VU up here. So it's, it's higher on the right. And just the louder the, the original file is, it's more dramatic and pronounced. Okay. So these, these sounds kind of fade in and they, uh, and they fade out um, already, but they're kind of moving into the channels anyway. So that's that's a kind of that's an element of the piece. Next is the I can control. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So now the last element of this that I can control. I think. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. So the last element that I can control is the delay between plays of like the, I don't want them to happen too often. So I want to put a, a pause between each, each, um, what chord. So I can set up the delay. And you can kind of see over here. Okay, maybe I'll do it again. It'll say it's delaying a certain amount of seconds. Okay, 
that's a quick delay. That's a that's a quick pause. It only did one point three two seconds. So I and that's it happened very quickly because I've set it I've set the minimum and the maximum delay very low. Um, they can be as low as between one and two seconds. Um, all the way on up to ten minutes. So setting like this, the 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 lowest minimum and the highest maximum here. I can just set that up and then it will choose a random delay time between one second and 10 minutes. Let's see what it chooses this time. 175 seconds. That's a long time. Um, I don't really want that much delay because, and you can, you can kind of see it um, going through its delay. So when this orange line gets to the end, that will be 175 seconds later. But I don't want that. I don't want to wait that long because that's the only thing happening right now. So I set it really low. Um, for some reason, it's not going to do this again. Okay, so I can turn it off and turn it on again. There we go. 10 seconds. It's because we're between the minimum, 1, and 18. So it randomly chose 10 and a quarter seconds to delay. And now we're on to the next uh, file, which is 318. And then we can go here and see the, the pan crawler. It's already chosen um, what filter it wants to do from here. It's calculated the, the next delay already, I think. And sometimes it's so quiet you can't hear it, but that's okay because it's only a part of the total piece. If it kind of happens inaudibly, just felt, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. And this is overall volume. So if anything is um, um, comes in too loud, I can rush in here and turn down the volume. It also lets me know if, if, if it's clipping. Okay, that's pretty much it for this, for this element, for this uh, part of the piece, which is ephemeris A. So I'm going to keep that going. Um, I know I'm going to come back when I add the other two elements to increase the delay because it, when it seems like we're hearing too much of A, of these chords, too, uh, too often, then I can kind of space them out more and, and turn down the volume, which I'm going to do right now. There. Um, I'm just going to go and do that already. Let's, let's set a... Let's set a... Um, let's set a maximum delay of about a minute and a minimum delay of 20 seconds. So that sounds, for now, we can always change this at any time. So let's set this back up and we'll take you to ephemeris B. B is the next element. So I'm just using different patches. And you can play as many patches, I think, as, you, as your computer can handle um, at once. So I can just keep adding layers to this. Um, it will play them simultaneously if I set them up to do so. Um, A is going to keep playing while we work on B. So I have to turn this on but a will happen a lot less frequently because we just set it up that way um so let's just start up okay what we're uh, before i start it up um we're gonna see some things here in this this one's a little different this one deals with different kinds of sounds now what i did was um i recorded i i wrote out um 30 dyads and a dyad is just a two note chord if you think triad for a three note chord dyad is just two notes and <clears throat> all of these um all of these dyads um are the notes it, within the dyad are spaced by relative by perfect intervals just meaning um in, in this case uh, the perfect intervals are uh, unisons, like the same note, 
um, octaves, which are just the, the same pitch, but in different octaves, um, and fourths and fifths. Those are the perfect intervals. Um, and a fourth is just dum bum 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 bum. That's a perfect fourth going up. Um, a fifth is bum 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 bum. Is so you hear those? Those are the foundation of all tonal music. You hear these all the time. They're very natural. They occur in nature. Um, things just ring out in fourths and fifths all the time. You hear that? It's just part of the physics of sound. So this is why I want to use fourths and fifths, and they're really easy to work with. Um, they're easy to hear, and they're also very, they, they mix very well with um, other tones, usually. So and they're, easy, they're easy to work with kind of as a building block. So I recorded all 12 keys. So you've got, I've got 30 of these things, and they're, they're recorded on a guitar. Maybe I can play. I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't crash my system, but um, I hope I can hear this. But I'm going to play an example of the sounds. Um, he here's one. Okay, that's the lowest one. It's a very low one. All right. Um, here's another one. So you can hear that there are a lot of low tones and um, hissing in that. So we've got another, we're, we're going to do the filtering thing on this one too. Um, so that's what it's going to, those, the, you heard note one and also note nine. And this one is going to choose uh, by shuffle also. You can see shuffle right there. It's going to choose from this. <coughs> this nice stack of 30 notes that I've recorded. And these are reading right from the disc and they're gonna take them. Um, there are actually two identical sets of players in this and there's nothing different about them, but they are set up to play simultaneously within the same patch. So I, have, I guess I just have twin players doing the same thing, pulling from the same, the same stable of notes, the same, same set of notes, note files. So you can see this is one up, up top here. I'll zoom in here. Oh boy, that's pretty large. So the controls, the main controls, you can see are start and stop for each of the players. So this is one. It's going to show the the note waveform here. It's going to show when it's playing, it'll register in this VU, this uh, velocity or this uh, volume indicator. It's going to also, this one, if you want to watch, this blue set of squares tells us what phase each player is in. So the first phase is it's going to play the note quietly. If we're not going to hear it because it's going to be, the volume is going to be automatically turned down for this phase because it's processing. It's going to listen to the note and apply um, heavy reverb on it, like um, kind of like room echo, um, but it's not exactly echo, it's reverb. Imagine being in a cave, you know, and it just kind of rings out. And then it's going to wait for either one second, two seconds, three seconds, or four seconds before it will hit this button called freeze, and it will freeze the reverb tail. So it's gonna kind of like go, bah, and then it'll decide, um, it'll hold out this note indefinitely until we turn it off. So we turn off the freeze, just a second. Right. So, um, so that's kind of randomized, it, whether it chooses the early part of the sample or, you know, one second in, two seconds, or up to four seconds to freeze. So if it wait, if it chooses, hey, Izzy, how's it going? It's good to see you, man. Um, I'm just uh, explaining this uh, new piece and I'm on the second part of it. So I'm on a roll. So uh, if, forgive me if I don't uh, engage right now, I'm kind of on a... You know, you know, the whole professor thing. 
once you get started lecturing, you can't stop until it's done. <laughs> it's good to see you. Hey, thanks for that piece, by the way. Um, the yeah, that 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 um that piece kind of gets me in the feels. So, all right, here we go. So we've so it can choose at what point because the later the later in the play that. Uh, in the reverb tail that it decides to freeze, the quieter it'll be. And it's also kind of different. It's got a gift, different sonority to it. And I can choose the degree of wetness in, or dryness, which is how much reverb to original signal we hear. Um, it also randomizes the filter uh, frequency and, e and the Q, which, which, similar to, uh, which is similar to what we saw in the A part. So I don't have to explain that again. And then it goes through and there are all these, I can set up how how much I want the fade in, how long I want the fade in to last, uh, minimum, maximum, how long I, and I want the hold to be. So if I want the piece to stretch out really long and be very spacious and last for hours and hours and rarely iterate um, things, not overstate, I can set these parameters to stretch it out or make it tight and move along quickly but i want the piece to generally kind of be slow so all right let's let's have a look at let's have a look at what it does so what it should do when i start this up is it'll read um both players will read from one of 30 files um, it'll shuffle them again it'll throw one in here and one in here and it'll start to quietly we won't hear this part of it but it will start to play the sounds and it'll reverb them and then it will freeze them at some point and then we'll, then they'll start to fade in at a predetermined kind of random speed uh you know parameter and then it'll hold it for a, a while that i've determined or by randomness uh, I determine the min, the minimum and maximum hold, and also same with the fade out. And then there will be another pause between each of these things. And then because they are kind of randomly, um, all these times are randomly chosen. They, these are going to get out of sync eventually, and then um, which is what I want. So let's fire it up and and see what happens. So we'll start this one, and there's the there's the note. It's reverb. It's reverbing and freezing. Okay, it's got it. So now it's going to fade it in. Here it comes. And I noticed that for some reason the first one gets a lot of hiss, but it's usually corrected on the second time around. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind that. So it's pretty strong. So that's those guitar chords, or the guitar notes. You can hear the, the, the fifth relationship pitches and the thing swelling in the back is the a section doing its thing so it's still holding and after a while uh, now it's starting to fade out just turn up volume here it's starting to fade out by itself until it gets to the bottom and when it bottoms out it will go to the pause phase and wait a random time interval before it starts all over again so that that happens over and over again and hopefully the idea is that two two sounds won't be alike because of all the different varying you know factors so i can start the second player so that it they kind of run in sympathy with each other well, it happened to choose the same one. Let's, let's, it, look, it, it's, okay, it's not set up to shuffle between them. Um, it just happened to pick the same note. This happens. Okay, so that's B. Working away. And we can probably turn the volume down on this. This is already in the hold phase. So it sets up these kind of, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so 
so far. This is my second go at, at pure data. Um, and there are a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm sure could be simplified. I just don't know the program well enough yet. So I've got these Rube Goldberg ridiculous processes to do something that's probably very simple, but it works more or less. But it's so much fun to learn. Um, Izzy, who's uh, listening right now, was, is um, he's an old pro at this stuff. He's, he uses Max, I think. He has used Max. He's probably taught it, too. So there, so we've got two elements going now. One happens very, kind of rarely <laughs> old. Old pro. I'm at pro. The uh, emphasis on pro. And I don't I don't know Max. I've heard of Max more, but it's the um, <laughs> uh, it's it's the I guess the more the the better version of this. This is the cheap, free version, but I love it. I think I'll start with this and move to Max one if I like it. So there's A in the background, and you can kind of hear this one going. So now it's see that sounds much better now. The uh, the filters are working better, keeping things in check and listening to parts of the sound that are that I like. So let's move on to Ephemeris C. This is the, the third one of the the third ingredient of the soup. So here we go. I would love it. I would love Max, you mean? Yeah. I I think I would. I will get to it. Um so C. This is my favorite one, um, obviously, because all composers, um, if you ask a composer, what's your favorite piece of music? They're going to say the last, the thing I'm working on right now. Are they better if they're not under contract, contractual obligation? They should be liking the piece they're working on right now. So this is the last thing I did. I just finished it up yesterday. And it is it uses harmonics from the same guitar that we've been using for these other sounds. Um, and it's, this is a lot simpler because I think I'm, by this point, I'm getting better at kind of, um, efficiency of using the codes and stuff. So I, all I had to do, what I wanted on this was, uh, taken care of by this amount of work. So I'll show you. So this is easy to explain. The, the thing I like about this one is that this element C is actually aware of what's happening in B. So it, it goes, it's look, it's listening in a way. It's not listening. Don't, I don't, I shouldn't say that word. Um, it's getting data from the B, uh, the B part. It knows, so it knows what is being played in B and it will actually choose sympathetic notes or notes in common with B to play. So I mean, otherwise, okay, let's, let's get it going here. I'm going to set it up to play all the possible ones. And it's just, I can play it here. These are just guitar harmonics from uh, the 12th fret and the seventh fret, and they're put through um, filters and reverb. So I'll just play them down the line. Can you, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So we got it. That's the 12th fret. Here's the 7th fret. Okay. And and it's going ahead and randomizing them. Um, so those are the harmonics on my Telecaster. But what I've done here is if I open them all up, these are kind of gates. This allows the, all these X's here means that all of the notes are allowed. What this does is it, this part, it looks at the notes that are being played by the B, those, those dyads that I mentioned earlier. It takes the numbers of them, it feeds them into this, and then I've set up, if, if this certain dyad is being played, then I only want to hear certain harmonics, the ones that are sympathetic. So in a way, it's kind of going to be listening. It's not doing it right now, but it will. Uh, um, 
once it starts getting data from B, it will it will so right now a lot of them don't match up. So if it hears any of these notes, and there are a lot of them in this one, um, it will close all the gates. So we won't hear anything for a while on this one. But if we hear notes 1, 13, or 25, it will open up the gates for these six notes here. Zero just kind of initializes the, the stream. So it will open up notes 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 12, and we'll see it here. And that will only allow those notes to be played by this random um, metronome shuffler. And again, it, it's shuffle, so it's going not it's not going to play the same note twice. But it could theoretically if we wait. If there is, um, if uh, anyway, there there's there are uh, situations where they will play the same note twice, but it's rare. And we have things like controls of you know controlling the the reverb, which I've done more of about damping and dry wet and filter control. So those aren't really randomized. I got these set up the way I like them. I got the default set. So now it's just going to wait for appropriate times to play appropriate notes. And it'll do that when it wants to. And I can set up how long the maximum delay between notes is on this slider here. So it's set up so right now it's going between 10 seconds and 15 seconds. Um, I'm going to keep it low just so that we can hear it more often. See, it played a note that it's not open. So now the ones are open right now. I'm hoping it'll... And it'll only play the last... <clears throat> it'll only choose from the last note that's played from B. Come on, give us, give us examples here. I think I can just set it. All right, let's pretend that. Let's force the hand of fate here. Um, say, one of these, uh, say note one is being comes in through here. Then it this will happen. So it'll bang this one, and it'll open up the gates for these notes here, which fit that chord. And it might play them, but it's not going to work because I forced it. Let's see, 2 and 14. 2 and 14. Oh, yeah, because 14. There we go. Oh, that's because I set it up. But anyway, the next time around, it, it should play appropriate notes according to what has happening in B. And there is the end of our lecture on Ephemeris. So let's go back to this screen where we can see all of them and yours truly hello it's a beautiful bright sunny morning here in South Korea yay okay I'm done downloading pure data now this is dangerous yeah it's so much fun dude I'm I just I I, I haven't done a twitch in something like 14 days I think I said um, that's two weeks by my count uh, yeah oh I get sorry but I'm gonna um, there's a way that I can tell the moderator bot to leave you alone I think I know I think there's a way to do that hold on I wrote it. I wrote it down somewhere. I think it's um, is it allow or something? Permit? It's permit. Permit. Okay. F and Izzy. Permit F and Izzy. Does it work? It's been granted. Permission to post a link for 30 seconds. Okay. But you know what? You should be on my moderator list or on your, you're, you're actually on the regulars list. I could make you a mod. 
I'm gonna do that. Ooh, being boy bot. Yeah, you should be my mod, not this ridiculous bot. Um, what's the command for that? Is it make, make mod or something? I don't, I don't know. Hold on, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna look it up quick. Wait, bot. Mod commands. <laughs> I hope you're all right, Izzy. Oh, great. That's easy. Um... <laughs> okay. How can I make you... Now there are all these things that I can do to block you and punish you in various ways. I can put you in a in a dungeon and leave you well, the dungeon and leave you there. Um, but I think I have to. Okay. Oh man, and okay. <laughs> okay. Well. Hmm. You want, you want me to, do you want to be punished? Ban then Izzy. Forever. Okay, make mod. Okay, bad name. Mod. Mm -hmm. You're in my regulars list. Lord. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, maybe I'll do this later. How you, how you doing, man? I'll figure that out later. I want to talk to my friend. Okay. All right, so the, the harmonics are actually doing the listening now. So sometimes it doesn't work. The A, the A part doesn't know what the other parts are doing. So it's, and it's not exactly going to, you know, that's the rogue element there. It could be atonal because of A. But between, if we just turned off, if we turned off A and just listened to B and C, they're gonna play nice and it's gonna be very, you know, harmonically pretty, pretty tame. Just hanging, okay. Finished teaching, all right. Hanging with me. Cheers. I'm having my morning coffee, which is already lukewarm. All right. So this is what I've been doing with all my time. This is why I've been um, kind of a wall from the whole Twitch world. Um, but I've been watching, and you know, I poke in on you once in a while, see what we see what you're up to. And I'm never disappointed. It's always cool stuff you're doing. Or you're pulling up old old uh, older pieces of yours or working on new stuff or improvising on the piano. It's just it's a great show you got going on. Oh it's true. I can always expect something new and cool. And you're always up updating your uh, your visuals, which is it's always uh, cool. 
it's inspiring. We've got quite a quite a following going on there too. Some cool people. Okay. So how are things on the East Coast? Oh. Oh, if you notice, <laughs> this is my new thing. I came up. Can you see the though there's a kind of a border around the camera here? It looks like stars. Okay. Oh, big blizzard on the way. Mm. Is that is that what you were calling a northeasterly? I don't know what you guys on the coast call storms. Northeasterly or something like that. Is that a, that's a, that's a, it sounds like a meteorological phenomenon. Yeah, a nor'easter. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you know what? Instead of me looking off stage left here, I think I'm going to bring the chat window dead center. That's much better. And so when I look over here, it's me looking at the OBS because my OBS is over here. And you are here now. Okay. Nor'easter. Yeah, I love blizzards too. Um, when you're nice and cozy warm inside. And you, I know you've got that uh, that uh, fireplace going on. That's that's cool. I grew up with a big fireplace in our place too, and I still know what it smells like. We go down and chop wood, and um, yeah, my dad still does it, and he's almost eighty now. Yeah. Yes, it is. Unfortunately, in Korea, it's a rarity. Um, most people live in uh, high-rise apartments. Uh, not, maybe not most people. Apartments or villas or something like that, but they're kind of stacked uh, one on top of each other. I live on the eighth floor of a 25-story um, apartment building in a complex. So we have this sort of courtyard in the middle and the kids play and cars park and the deliveries are made yeah like like kind of yeah it's a big city I mean, busan is a big city it's the second biggest city in korea next to seoul um and it's on the ocean so that i i love it there's a lot of um mountains there's mountains and beaches and hiking paths and walking paths plenty of places to ride a bike um yeah i love living here i love it if you like the food and don't mind learning a new tough language, that's this is the place, man. This is great. People are very nice. Um, generally, there's a, there's a general, yeah, I bet, yeah. Korean food is amazing. Um, maybe I'll turn down the, the piece a little bit so I, I can compete. Yeah, the food, the food's wonderful. Um, I love spicy food. If it's if it's red, I'm I'm in, man. <laughs> if it's orange or something, uh, yeah. Lots of vegetables, lots of seafood, um, rice-based, grain-based dishes. Um, um, and there's a rising vegetarian. I'm not vegetarian myself, but um, we we know some people who are, and there are uh, there's a growing number of. Oh, there's a little six chord. You hear that? <laughs> little jazz chord in there. Um, yeah, hot, hot and spicy. Love it. Good stuff. And my wife is a an excellent cook, and she's uh, she's very creative with what, what what she makes, and she lets me cook once in a while if we don't want to eat quite as healthy. I'll I'll make a pizza. <laughs> Her sister is coming uh, at the end of the week, and we're going to have pizzas, and I'm going to be the cook for that party. So anyway, yeah. I'm in charge of the unhealthy food, and she's in charge of the healthy food. She's trying to keep me alive as long as she can. <laughs> so I don't complain. It's all really good. Yeah. 
What are you working on these days? I kind of know, but I won't. Austerity. I have been in Korea. You can answer my question. We can queue up. We can do. We can do the chat thing. Um, I've been in Korea for uh, since two thousand one. Since March or April. Was it March? Two thousand one. So I arrived here, and then once I got my feet on the ground, nine eleven happened. So I came here just after, not not long after George W. Bush was um, inaugurated. So I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> Sitting in Chicago, steaming about the election. And so a lot has changed. A lot has happened since then. So yeah. I'm eating the food. I'm, I can, I, I speak, get by-ish Korean. I can get by. Yeah. You almost went back to Hungary then. Oh, that, at that time. But you didn't. I think you're typing. Yep. Okay. How long did it take you to type? Yep. I'm teasing. Yes, my dad was talking about going back to Hungary with, with us boys, my brother and I, and my uncle, his brother. Um, but Corona happened. So we almost, we were thinking about going, but <laughs> slow typer. Are you an eagle typer? Koreans say eagle typer. And they're like one one finger at a time. So we, one finger, okay. Eagle typer. Koreans have such great, um, <laughs> have these really great expressions for things that we don't, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll make terms for things that are borrowed from English, but all oh, right. Yeah, I heard about that. I, we have, uh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over the place, but I want to go back to what we were talking about. We were talking about Hungary. Um, yeah, um, I have a, yeah, uh, yeah, he is. Um, it turns out, uh, this is a long story short, I have a distant cousin who's a bit older than me, but she's, she's, uh, she found me on, on uh, Facebook years ago and she sought me out because she rec she was going through her genealogy and she re uh, researched um a, a, a few steps back uh, her she, we had the same you know surname we have bajali so she searched bajali and came up looked on facebook and she found me so she sent me this message and said i think i might be your relative and um, her English wasn't so good, but uh, good enough. I mean, better than, you know, most, I'm sure. And uh, so we, we connected and communicated for a while. And it turns out we, you know, she presented her genealogy. And then I looked at ours and that my dad had figured out. And sure enough, we we even found the, the photograph of the document that our was a great great grandfather came over from Hungary on a boat and we have the was it the manifest of the boat that he, that their family came out over on and it the names matched and everything so yeah we're totally distant cousins and she's an artist yeah it was really cool she's really nice and um she has a daughter who's a musician and she's a textile artist and she you know does shows in um, in Hungary all the time and she's uh, she has really great um, pieces of art that she's made out of um, you know textiles you know, just uh, bits of wood and repurposed old doors and uh, cloth and 
burlap and just all these really great she's an amazing artist and she says so much with these materials it's amazing half the country is really <laughs> yeah but we're we're, we're we're legitimately cousins I haven't heard from her for a while but um, once in a while her daughter posts uh, something on on SoundCloud was it SoundCloud or Band yeah, SoundCloud yeah she's really good she's she's um, she does like I guess lo-fi ambient dance like EDM kind of beats and stuff she's very cool she's very hip but I haven't communicated with her directly I just listen to her music and stuff and I don't want to be this guy that, hey, I'm your cousin. So. I'm a friend of your mom's. I'm sure she would not like that. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. I think my... I don't think my dad watches these, so I'm going to say it. Um, I think my dad's first impulse was to kind of just was dive into their life and, and find out what they you know all about them and you know just communicate communicate and he he wanted to, me to send him send her these uh, messages and I said well you know you can you can do this directly and I, said, I, I haven't heard from her back it's like it's because she doesn't use English as much and you know she you can't ex Americans we want to we expect everyone to speak English in the world. Which is uh, just a strange double standard. Um, <laughs> it's not a strange double standard. It's just a double standard that Americans do. Yep. Mm -hmm. We expect we expect everybody to speak English, and if they don't, we think they're we imply that they're not smart or something. You know, it's ridiculous. Uh, there are other languages in the world, and you know, English is just if you want to do business in America, you gotta do it. I guess. Anyway. Merka. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But uh, to be fair about my dad, though, um, he's almost 80, and I call him on, I call them on the phone, um, and we use, we don't use telephone, we use the Google Hangouts. But, um, and you know, sometimes their their memory is going. You know, they 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 complain about not having the memory that they used to, which I totally get. And you know, I you know, things it's it's hard to get old. You know, I get it. But then the other day, I'm talking to him on the phone, and we're the, within five minutes of picking up the phone, he's he's speaking to me in German, like fully fluent German, and um and I know that he didn't speak German in the house, not really. It was, he got, he had it something like, he studied German in high school for a couple years and he devoured it and, and he still remembers that stuff. And we're, you know, and I'm, I studied German too, so we're, we're kind of, and he was way better than me and I studied a lot longer. Um, and so he, he was just, I was, oh my God, you speak, you speak German. We're, I kind of remember him doing a little German when I was studying German in middle school, and and but I think he was holding back because now he just sounds, yeah, yeah, me too. Um, uh, we use Duolingo. Uh, we my my wife and I study dual use Duolingo to study language every day. It's kind of how I wake up. So these days I'm I'm studying. Um, well, Korean, obviously, um, which is uh, mind-bendingly difficult. Uh, do I like Korean or Duolingo? Yeah, ich auch. Mein mein Deutsch ist schlecht. Du du Dueling. A oh, Duolingo. Yeah, D U O. D-U-O, L-I-N-G-O. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's great fun. Um, I, I use it. It's kind of my brain calisthenics in the morning. 
if I, when I wake up, I go straight to the living room and, and I do 10 to 15 minutes on uh, Duolingo. And then once I'm, once I study a little bit of Korean, then in my mind is all the cylinders are firing. And I know what's going on. But before, ah, oh yes, my, my wife learned Japanese on Duolingo and now she's, she's fluent. She practices all the time. She's got a, a Japanese instructor, and and uh, I think she might be better than the Japanese instructor now. Yeah, what well, it's such a great way um, to keep your mind limber is language study. Um, I read somewhere that if you study languages throughout your life, then you really reduce your risk of of. Um, memory loss and uh things like oh what's the <laughs> as i demonstrate memory loss um as you get older you might become ah oh, dis not dyslexic but um <laughs> so now i'm completely off my yeah my butt is kicked Help me out. When you get old and you're you become senile, that's not exactly the word I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, studying a language regularly, it it helps stave off things like Alzheimer's and um, senility and you know, all the things that where your brain kind of slouches into non-use. So this kind of keeps you. This is why people like you know, Chomsky and uh, just, you know, some of those old, oh, dementia, that's it. Thank you, dementia. This is why, yeah, people like Chomsky are super old and they're, they're just, they haven't lost a step. They're just bang, bang, bang. They know exactly. They might be slow in talking, but their brain is working a lot faster than their mouth. Yeah. Language study, man, it keeps those, it keeps those, um, the little boxes in your brain, keeps those door, those lids open. Yeah. Okay. So I completely forgot about this music that we're listening to. Um, but I think it's going well, because I think if, if it doesn't annoy me, Um, then I'm okay with it. It's actually not bad, yeah? Thanks. Yeah, it's designed not to get in your face at all. Unless I want it to, then I'll just hit a slider and... So sometimes there's these weird meaty chords coming in. So I'm thinking about adding a D. Ephemeris D. And I think that might be a little more rhythmic. I haven't messed with producing rhythms on this, but I think that might be the next step. A drum, a drum track. Not, not like EDM, but just rhythms, maybe non-pitched rhythms. I don't know yet. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I. I love that about. Um, oh hey Nate, Nate's here. Um, yeah, I love that um, when these kind of happy mis um, things happen. These happenstance, serendipity kind of when the music that can't hear you decides to underscore what you're saying and <laughs> I didn't I don't remember that when I was talking about my dad and the music changed I guess we're just kind of looking at a smile on a dog aren't we for this but I'd like to think that the dog is really happy or the baby is really happy and it smiled at me but it's really just having gas or something <laughs> okay yeah I get really dramatic I think when I talk about my dad 
yeah, PD. Well, I did build them. I did build this program, so I guess Gassy PD is happy. <laughs> yeah, I think I gave it gas. That's what happens. Hey, Nate. Are, okay, I want to answer Nate's question. Okay, uh, these three patches going at once. I think might to go go underneath rubber or standalone. Okay. Um, yeah, the, all these three things. Um, I'm not going to go over everything, but um, the A part is trumpet. Um, if you can hear, here it comes. Okay, did you hear that little swell in the background? That was that was processed trumpet chords. And then this is it. This is it for now. I think I'm going to add more layers to it. I'm, I'm, I think I might add more um, more things to go on. It'll it'll be less kind of um, infrequent. But it'll be more frequent things happening. And then B are kind of washes of of sound. The held um, tones, and then the C is more single notes. Bing. So, and one of them is listening to the other one, kind of. It's aware of what the other one's doing, so it chooses notes according to what the other one is doing. Which got me thinking, maybe the next project will be more about that kind of thing where um, they'll something will happen in one part and then it will send that information to the next part and it'll say this is what I've done so this one will go okay since you've done that I'll do this according to you know charts and things yeah it knows yeah well, why not Does that answer your question? Yes, all the yeah, three patches are going at once, yes. Are they going to go underneath Trump or Stand Alone? I could, I suppose I could improvise over this. But I kinda I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> and I haven't played in a couple weeks, so ooh. Corona. It's been terrible for my trumpet chops. Ugh. Thanks, is. Let's go back to. I keep looking at the camera and I realize the camera's not on. Let's go back to here. Okay. Yeah, I usually, when I'm composing, I use these really big, these big uh, cans that are all wrapped up. <laughs> but um, with because it's got this mic, but this mic sucks, and um, I'd much rather use my nice condenser mic. And I don't know if you can notice, but in these star, the star fields thing, I want to show you. No, it's not real time. I wish it was. I wish it were. Um, but they're moving, aren't they? Yeah, there are three actual Hubble telescope photographs of stars. Um, three different ones. I'll show them. Okay, here's one. Here's another. And here's the third. It's very sparse, this one. And they're all, they're all kind of transposed on each other. They're, they're what? Superimposed. And they're also slowly moving in different directions. So they're, it gives a weird kind of, and that's the whole ephemeris thing, because ephemeris is just a chart of the motions of celestial objects 
So that's that's where that comes from. It's not just random. I like it too. But yeah, they're moving really slowly. You might not notice it unless you focus on it. Don't stare too much. You go mad. But kind of has that that um, planetarium vibe to it, you know. You lay in the seats and you look up at the projected images on the ceiling, on the round ceiling. The, you know, <laughs> and you expect a voice to come on, space. So big. Yeah, I'm not going to do my impression of that guy. For centuries, man has perple been perplexed by the mysteries of the unknown. Here is where our eyes are averted to contemplate the infinite mysteries of the universe, of the cosmos. See, I'm terrible. Phenylalanine? Am I saying that right? Phen Phenylalanine. Is that some sort of compound that I should be taking for my dyslexia? <laughs> I think Nate might be AFK. Oh, he's still here. Phenylalanine. Something I should get a prescription for. Sounds like an active ingredient in something. Phenylalanine. Is she a composer? Or a music fan or something? Or how do you guys know her? Frequent, is she a frequent, uh, okay, yes. <laughs> All of those things, huh? Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think I get more, um, I think I get more bots than actual people, but uh, you count for a lot. Is. She composes, but has to, oh, okay. Yeah, I think there are a lot. Yeah, that's true, man. I knew it the first time. The first time I saw your your stream, I thought, "Oh, this this dude." Yeah, we could we could hang. They're cut from the same stuff. Similar, maybe kind of similar backgrounds, you know, educationally and. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I imagine that uh, um, the Corona virus has prompted a lot of musicians and composers to go looking for ways to, you know, instead of going to, you know, conventions and, you know, whatever was uh, going to BAM for something, to uh, do this and. I noticed that there's an increasing number of people twitching under the the tag of creative and composing 
not very many, but a growing number. And there's some really cool stuff. I'm very excited by that. That I, I know I've told you this before, but um, yeah, a lot of people, do, and, and everybody's doing something different. Um, yeah, a bunch of really cool, uh, like very professional composers doing stuff like for TV and film and game music that, you know, and they know their stuff, man, and they're, their stuff is amazing and it's really cool to watch them work. And just, I think some of them do it. I think we have this human, you know, compulsion to, to kind of just do it in front of people. Because this, this kind of feels like what I feel like doing this kind of thing, kind of presenting this new thing that I'm working on in front of you guys is, oh, decomposing oh okay yeah the, the the feeling i get from from this experience showing you guys a piece it's kind of like a, a gallery opening or something or a a recital or just presenting something in a in a visual way and where you can hear the piece but it's also social where you can kind of go oh yeah and the, you know you don't have to like it you don't you just go oh yeah you're just kind of sharing it and it makes you feel like more of a it makes me feel like more of a um, but more because you can you can compose in a, in a vacuum and that's okay to a point where you kind of have yeah community exactly you need a community. Um, um, the the moderator didn't like <laughs> because of the all caps. It doesn't like all caps, so just type all caps the word all caps in lowercase and then I'll know you're in trouble with my night bot you're gonna get you're gonna get canned in a minute banned okay um anyway what was I saying yeah you can <laughs> it's definitely a tool in the expression toolkit the all caps that and misspelling the. <laughs> right. Is it creepy at all that you're just looking at a blank, like a star field screen? Is that okay? Or should I put, should I put the piece back up? Um, nope. Okay. Um, yeah, there's something about having a community that I don't know, gives it to my, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but it, it, I kind of feel like I have more reason or purpose, or um, I don't feel like I'm doing this by myself or for myself. I do feel like, oh, I'm reminded that, oh, there is a, there is a need for artists to kind of meet and show that they're doing stuff and be influenced by each other and I love listening to your stuff and Nate's music is really good too it's all but we're all doing something different and it's all really good in different ways and um and you get a chance to kind of I like when I'm doing the twitch it's my turn at the microphone I have the conch so I can say what I want and you guys you know are typing it and then when, when I listen to your twitch then you get you get the mic and I get to type my things and so it's all I, I like the setup I like the format and I think it really works for what com, what a lot of composers are doing and um, more so even than say a, a round table or um, a convention or something because those tend to be whoever whoever socially kind of more adapted can can dominate and they end up being the ones that people kind of look look up to and stuff but i don't know it doesn't mean they don't have good things to express but that's that's the way i remember grad school being was that there were these there was one or two guys who dominated and were kind of considered amongst our group to be kind of the, the best but i don't know if um 
objectively their music was any better than some of the others, but just they were more kind of dominating this, the whole academic jockeying for, you know, it's any, every social group, I guess, is, does that. Seminar-like, yeah. Less formal, yeah, more fun. Yeah, I agree. I tell you, I, I, I'm working way more than I did per day, per week than I was before I started doing this, before I met you. It's almost like in the back of my, yeah, composer support group, totally. It's great. Yeah, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it up. I'm, I might go dark um, a little uh, once in a while, but that's only because I'm working. And this week is finals week. Yeah, the regularity keeps the juices flowing. Absolutely. And listening to other, watching other composers working right now, what they're working on right now, does change my habits. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing things a little differently, and I'm getting ideas. And uh, I didn't know I didn't even know about pure data until recently. I think you mentioned, okay, I know what it was. Here, here's how I got turned on to Pure Data. I was watching your Twitch stream and was, I, I brought up um, that a, uh, AFOM, an, an a, a -N -F -O -M, a new form of music, that one, the guy, the guy in um, Edward Luce, I think is his name, in Japan. He's got this really weird, weird and fom, right? It's I, weird, but when I say weird, that's a compliment uh, in a good way. Weird. It's very cool. Um, it's weird meaning unabashedly unique from anything else that's going on. And uh, I think he's got some really cr cool ideas about what a, a new art form can be. Um, and he seems to know a lot about how to manipulate you know the visuals and put sound on it and stuff and it's just it's very it just has that it has that new car smell of ideas you know the smell is just very cool and it's you know it's kind of it's got mystery and storytelling and you, it's got riddles and you, you can kind of see that he's working on stuff and he's constantly you know working he's constantly updating it and adding things. He added a lot of things recently. He seems to be uh, coming out and showing his face more, um, establishing a presence for himself um, and gathering lots of you know, followers and things. And, and it's very cool and exciting to see that. And, and then you said, you mentioned that, oh, I bet you could do that on Max or something like that. You mentioned Max as maybe he uses Max. And I thought, hmm, okay, I don't know what that is. So I looked it up and I found what Max was and I thought, okay, I don't wanna spend money right now. So I just wanna, is there a, is there a demo of it that I can get and start? Cause I thought, ooh, if he can do that, well, what, what can I do that? Can I do this on OBS? No, not really. Um, so then I found out that there's pure data. So, some of the documentation and the, you know, the YouTube tutorials are something almost like 15 years old and stuff and outdated and they don't even have PD extended anymore. That does not, it's not supported. So I had to figure out what was old and what was new and what was relevant and what wasn't. And so I downloaded it and started learning it. And, and here I am, it's completely dominating my, my work time. Yeah, and there's a book, I guess, right? People people mention this book, but I can imagine that if you write a book about something like this, it's going to become obsolete pretty quickly. That's brilliant. And like I said, I'm only scratching the surface in that 
most of the things that I'm doing here, I'm sure, could be reduced to more simpler objects. Yeah, a lot of those really early um, tutorials from like 2008 and stuff are pretty, a lot of that I, you know, are still relevant, still applicable. But then I'll come across some object that doesn't exist anymore and I go, oh, I wanted that one. So I had to, you know, download a, an extension. I think that's what they're called, extensions. Like my, um, where's that one? Free, free verb. I don't know if you can see, see it's free verb. Where's my, oh yeah, for B. Right there. Uh, it's a mess. My my. Look at all this. This is such such a mess. I I really should clean this up, and then use more um, send and receive functions. And I do use a lot of send and receive functions, but it, I'm I'm totally messy. <laughs> you, you can see through the the web. Freebird. Yeah, I like it. It looks like a Zanaka score. Yeah, I really like this this kind of thing. You know, I, I love how that looks. Doesn't that awesome? It looks like a Zanaka score. It does. So I I set it up to make it look like that. You know, I, I could put this elsewhere, but I like it right where it is because it gives this little tangential curve thing. It, yeah, it is. I love architecture. I think Xenakis was an architect at one point, wasn't he? But yeah, free verb is not native to PD vanilla. That's an extension. Yeah, he was. Mm hmm. I thought so. Makes sense. And I think, um, who did. John Cage studied with Schoenberg, I think, for a little while, um, as much as he could stand, probably. And I think he, Schoenberg described Cage as more of a, I, I could be getting this wrong, but he described Cage as more of an architect than a composer. I, I might be mixing that anecdote with somebody, somebody else, but I think that's, but I don't think, you know, and, and Schoenberg, I think he meant it as an insult or to, de to Cage's detriment, but I, there's nothing wrong with that. Architecture is an art. And if we think in structures, then we should be thinking in terms of structure, uh, as far as how things are put together. Philosopher of music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need more philosophers. We can't just, we just, you can't just do craft, you know. It's not just about the pretty stuff. It's about what it all means. What does it all mean? Yeah, we spend too much time thinking about that, don't we? Not too much. A lot. But it's time well spent. So the free verb is a extension and what's the other one? I think shuffle. Yeah, shuffle. I really tried to get, I really tried to build a shuffler out of random. But when I looked it up, I, I saw, oh, someone's using shuffle. So I found it. Someone had already made one. And it works beautifully. Just one little, one little object shuffle. The first number is the first number oops, is the first number. That's the last number. And this is the, I forgot. <laughs> it's some sort of parameter that 
it helps it uh, when it when it moves to when it gets to the end of the deck how does it choose randomly the next one so it's, it's almost like i guess a seed for the next one something like that i don't know i don't completely understand it all but i'm yeah, i'm getting there i'm getting there but yeah it's very it's very messy especially when it's zoomed in like this There are so many, okay. Yeah, that's what I love about it, right? It's one of the things that's great. It's that it's very customizable and there's there's really, it's, it's a set of tools designed to, for you to just do whatever you want, but it's not that easy. You can't just think it and do it. You have to figure it out. And I like the figuring out part. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Built-in help. Yeah, the help here is kind of hit and miss. Because it it might work. Okay, you can't see this. Okay, I just pulled up a help file for the shuffle, but you can't see it. All right, I'm not going to mess with that. But yeah, the in PD Vanilla, as you know, the the help is you don't always get you need to know and sometimes the sometimes the language that they use in the in the help is uh, assumes that you you know a lot of <laughs> things that that's not not obvious knowledge it's not common knowledge so you gotta go digging and i'm okay with that i got the time it's okay i think we can probably go back to the star field Oh, let's see if we... All right. You didn't see the beginning, but there, this, there, was, there was a whole... Um, set up this whole kind of intro beginning thing. So this is the first screen. This is me kind of... This is the... The Twitch is about to begin screen oh oh okay cool yeah just drop a I just yeah you you're afk okay cool cool
Oh, yes. Ooh. Ramen chicken ginger soup. Wow, what could be better? Hmm. It's getting about lunchtime here, so... Nah, I'm hungry. I don't know if you can hear. Okay. Okay, maybe you can hear my wife chopping vegetables in the background. Okay, I think most of it is being taken up by the noise filter. But, yeah. So, it looks like... Okay. All right. So you were you're um, you were talking on the phone with your sister. Okay. okay. Gluten free. Yeah. It's nice that you can, you know, you can eat something that's delicious and good for you. Happy, healthy. Oh, you can hear it. Okay. <laughs> Chopping block. Yeah, I think. Two hours and 21 minutes is enough. So, well, I'm going to say my goodbyes to you for now, Mr. Is. And we will, I will hook up with you again soon on your, are you, are you going to be, uh, are you going to be twitching today, tonight? shopping sound too it means that's about the eat yes are you going to uh, be live this evening <gasps> Wednesday evening okay so it's Tuesday evening for you now so tomorrow then all oh, right i hope you still have a, a house after the storm just kidding okay mon frere we'll see you next time and um yeah thanks for coming by and making it a, a real fun one ah uh, yeah, Kivanok. Yeah, I learned that one. Kivanok. Yeah. Yo, it, 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 vagyat, it vagyat, Kivanok. Right? I, you can't correct me because I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Kosonom, see ya, and see you next time. Ciao.